Well, how you doing, everybody? So, do you recall in my Sonic the Hedgehog vlog where I mentioned there were worse ways to keep your kids entertained for 90 minutes? Well, Doolittle is one of those worst ways. This was directed by Stephen Gagan and stars Robert Downey Jr. as Dr. John Doolittle, the man who can talk to animals. Once upon a time, Dr. Doolittle and his wife used to go on fantastic adventures around the world. And any one of those adventures probably would have been better than the story we got. Instead, we meet up with Dr. Doolittle after his wife has sadly passed away, and he has locked himself up in his animal sanctuary, which was once open to the public, now closed indefinitely. One day, a young man named Tommy Stubbins, played by Harry Collette, stumbles into Dr. Doolittle's life when he accidentally shoots a squirrel, which somehow results in no blood, and he brings it to the animal sanctuary for treatment. He also meets the young lady Rose, played by Carmel Laniato, who informs him Queen Victoria has fallen ill. It turns out she has been poisoned, and the only antidote is a very rare fruit. And so Dr. Doolittle embarks on a long and terribly uninteresting adventure to find this goddamn fruit. This is, of course, not the first attempt at bringing Dr. Doolittle to the big screen, though it should probably be the last. Of course, there was the Rex Harrison version way back in 1967, which I saw when I was a kid. On video, I'm not that old. And I thought it made absolutely no sense whatsoever. Then there was the Eddie Murphy version in 1998, which was... okay. Probably not good enough to warrant a sequel, but this was back when the name Eddie Murphy could still make money. Compared to the Rex Harrison version, it was much more coherent. And much less racist. And now we have the Robert Downey Jr. version, which is batshit insane in all the worst ways. Maybe it's time to admit Dr. Doolittle on the big screen just is not going to work. And speaking of Mr. Downey, I don't know what he was trying to do here, but... Ooh, I was starting to wonder if he was back on the crack. This performance is just so bizarre. From his erratic behavior to his, I'm gonna go with Welsh accent? or something close to it. It seems they were trying to portray him as some kind of amusing eccentric, but he's really not amusing. It's just really, really weird. And the children's reaction to Dr. Doolittle is equally bizarre. There is a scene where he has to get information from an octopus that is sitting in a fish tank in the queen's bedroom. And so he just dunks his face into the tank and starts thrashing around in there trying to get some information out of this octopus who refuses to talk because snitches get stitches, which I'm sure was totally a thing people said back in the Victorian era. And the whole time this is going on, the kids are just standing there smiling at him like, just like that. They're not moving. I don't even think they're blinking. They're just standing there with some weird smile frozen on their face, like... Yeah. It seemed to me that Gagan genuinely did not know what to do with them, or with anyone else in the movie, really. I'm sure we're supposed to interpret it as the kids thinking, oh, what a fun, whimsical man this is. But it seemed to me more like they were frozen with fear and smiling awkwardly at the absolute lunatic in front of them because they didn't know what else to do. Like, oh my god, he's, he's really doing this. He's flailing about in the goddamn fish tank and trying to talk to a friggin' squid. That's... That's, that's amazing, really. <laughs> the exit is behind us and to our right. When I count to three, run. Don't look back, just run. And when the humor in this movie isn't weird or unsettling, it's just plain juvenile. Bart jokes? Check. Nut shots? Oh yeah. And of course, there's the climax of this movie. And if you haven't seen the film, You've probably heard rumors about what happens at the end, and I am here to tell you, the rumors are absolutely true. The climax of Doolittle features the good doctor pulling a set of bagpipes, among other things, out of a dragon's ass. I'm going to say that again. Dr. Doolittle pulls a set of freaking bagpipes 
out of a dragon's rectal cavity. I could give you context, but ask yourself this. Would it matter? And through all of this madness, the movie is trying to send some kind of a message about grieving for lost loved ones and moving on after they're gone and being kind to animals and whatnot, but it's hard to get much of anything out of this movie when it is such a hot mess. Now, it's not all terrible. The visuals are very good. They did a pretty good job with the animals. They're still obviously CGI, but it is at least very good CGI. And the rest of the cast, well, they tried. Antonio Banderas plays King Rasuli, Dr. Doolittle's former father-in-law. He was fine. Michael Sheen and Jim Broadbent played the villains, and they did what they could. The kids were fine. There wasn't anything about them that really stood out, but at least they could act. I'm not really sure why Tommy got to go on the adventure with Dr. Doolittle and Rose did not, since compared to the two of them, she seemed far more intelligent and mature, but oh well. And the voice cast for the animals includes so many talented people, far more than I could possibly name, and they were great. And the bits with the animals do show that the movie had some potential. Like, there was some charm in here buried underneath all the crap, like a polar bear that needs to wear a hat because it's cold all the time. That's funny. That polar bear is voiced by John Cena for some reason. That's funny. But there just wasn't enough charm here to save the movie from Downey's insanity and Gagan's ineptitude. I think it is still playing in theaters for some reason, probably just out of contractual obligation. Don't bother. Just don't. Wait for the inevitable riff tracks. That's about the only enjoyment you're going to get out of this. And that's all I have to say about Doolittle. Till next time, take care.